This is the Triple Play Fantasy Basketball Show. I am your host, Coach James Lewis. Back again, week seven, trying to get better each and every week. I'm joined by my co-host, Jacob Dunn, who's doing a little bit of traveling this uh, Thanksgiving weekend. How are you doing, and how's the family? Uh, I'm doing excellent, my man. Yeah, like you said, I had a great time celebrating Thanksgiving with my family back in Vegas. Uh, and now I'm ready to help you guys prep for week seven. So. Let's do this, my man. All right. Well, and we'll find out later whether he hit big um, as far as some, <laughs> some sports gambling or maybe the funds that he keeps away from his wife. Uh, a little a dabble, a little 20 here, a little 100 <laughs> there. If you if you bet on Duke last night, you uh, paid it paid off as they were a nine point underdog and they beat the number one Gonzaga team, which is only Gonzaga's second loss in two years. And that's uh, huge, huge win as the number one and number two overall picks went head to head at Paolo Benchero and Chet Holmgren, and they did not disappoint. Um, so yeah, the uh, NBA is in good hands. Oh, yeah. Um, but we got to get you right. Uh, it's week seven. This at this point, uh, the standing start falling in the top, you know, eight guys, top six teams are all heavily available and then it's you notice the bottom four stop editing their lineups and we hate that um, yeah. even if you're a bottom feeder at least click the start active people as i as a commissioner i have to tell people to put your injured people on the injured line and at least pick somebody mm -hmm. up but it's frustrating when you played that opponent week one and two and they stole a couple categories and now they're getting you know blanked 11-0 because they're not touching their yeah. team so we are touching our teams, and um, right. Jacob is a big component on being as active as possible. That's right. So we're going to swing things off. Uh, we call it waiver wires, but it's, you usually don't get the guys on the waiver because it's usually, again, those bottom feeders that have first dibs on whoever might have got cut accidentally. Somebody was drunk and, and hit, a, hit a drop. We're looking at free agents. <laughs> and a top free agent and somebody that I picked up on Monday, and, and he's here to stay. He's my guy. Uh, Jared Vanderbilt, who's yes. only 22 out of Kentucky. Uh, he's starting for your Minnesota Timberwolves. So actually, uh, is playing some winning basketball about 500, but that's still, that's winning for <laughs> T Wolves, who had one of the worst, uh, records in putrid, uh, performances last year. And they yeah, lost 20 in, in a row at a certain point this last week, he is 52% rostered and then power forward center eligible. You got to love that. Uh, uh, uptick of 40%. So he's your biggest pickup of the week. 12 rebounds a game. He had a, a 15 rebound performance. Um, he's been averaging three steals. He's had four straight games with 10 plus rebounds. He's a must add right now. And a little tidbit on Jared Vanderbilt and the Minnesota Timberwolves is this starting lineup of Pat Bev, of Anthony Edwards, of uh, J Jared Vanderbilt, Cat. Uh, it is the, they have the highest uh, net rating in the NBA that as that far as that starting lineup is concerned. Uh, Pat Bev just went down a little bit, but they're playing winning basketball. Jared Vanderbilt is he must add. Uh, and to send it to Jacob, our guy that we told you to get last week, um, he's still available. Can you talk a little bit about Jeremiah Robinson Earl, our Absolutely. darling for the Thunder? Absolutely, man. JRE, man. He started. He has started seven out of, out of the last eight games for OKC. Over his last three games, JRE is averaging 12 points, 7.3 rebounds, 2.3 threes, and one stock while shooting 50% 50, 50 from the field. All right, we mentioned, as you said, James, we mentioned Robinson Earl last week as a deep league pickup, and he's only gotten better and more consistent. All right, the 21-year-old should continue to get plenty of run on a 12th seated see the thunder who want to give all of their young guys a lot of run so definitely give this guy a look in 12 plus team leagues and uh, we're asking yahoo espn to change that 
uh, position flexibility. He's a small four. He's a power four. He plays most of his minutes at the at the five. Right. And they have eventually changed Precious Achua, who was in the same situation and listed at small forward earlier in the season, as small four, power four, center eligible. So we're hoping that, yes, um, we get Jeremiah Robinson Earl in that same category. Uh, just a shout out, Precious Achua. He's still um, giving you rebounds galore. He is a safe pick. That's right. Um, when we're talking about rebounds, the average eight is n- is nothing to sniff at. And then he's not just done it the first week of the season. He's done it with um, people coming in and out of the lineup, whether it's Siakam, whether it's uh, Boucher, whether it's anybody in that lineup. He still produces as far as that's concerned. So um, shout out a, a safe floor guy. Now, um, a guy that we told you to drop two weeks ago. This was his stats. Uh, this is Desmond Bain. Mm-hmm. Um, he had a, a a week averaging eight points a game, shooting lower than 30% from the field. He had a two point performance. Uh, he's picked it up. Shooters shoot, and when they get hot, you gotta you gotta get them. He's now 63% rostered, 12% uptake in this last week alone. He averaged 24 rebounds, uh, gave you a assist and a half. But the three pointers is is where you you want to look at as far as his production is concerned. And he's giving you 3.3 a game. He's shooting over 52%. Uh, he's had three games of 20 plus points, four rebounds, four three pointers made in a row. So he was actually he's actually what you think of at, when you're talking about waivers, because he's a guy that was cut. So he might have actually been sitting there. And now Ja Morant is out with a left knee sprain. And that that's just only going to increase his uh, usage rate. Um, yeah, Ja was finding him very well. But Desmond Bain um, for the Grizzlies, as well as you might want to give uh, Ty Jones a look. Uh, as far as who's going to replace those John ja Morant minutes, it's disappointing because that Memphis team runs as far as John ja Morant does. And so uh, a, a young up and coming team, you, you don't like to see someone go down, especially John ja Morant, especially him having that knee injury last year. It's uh, concerning, especially how explosive he plays. It's concerning going forward. Um, and Zion's already deals with his own issues. And you, you would hate that if John ja Morant falls in a similar pickle. So, um, Je- Desmond Bain, he's 63% rostered, which means that he's open <laughs> in, right. in, a, in a lot of leagues. Go scoop him up today. Yes, we, when we told you to cut him, it was it was warranted. Maybe you should have held on a little bit longer. <laughs> uh, but yeah. a guy like that, uh, it, you got to go with how streaky he's shooting. Like so, someone like a, a Grayson Allen comes to mind. It's like you can pick him up, you can drop him, and you're not going to lose too, too much sleep about it because he's going to have hot weeks. He's not going to have hot weeks as well. <laughs> And also, man, like you said, Tyus Jones is also a fantastic pickup. You know, like, you know, if Desmond Bain is already rostered in your league, then Tyus Jones has proven to be a capable starting point guard. You know, he will get you points, assists with. He did it last year when uh, when Morant went out. He was yep. producing. He was a good fantasy pickup last year. So he's Top done 100. it before. Yeah. And he's one of our best leagues uh, backup uh, yeah. point guards. Um, I'm swinging it your way. You got two guys in line, two young guys that have. Um, yeah. High ceilings, high potentials. That's right. That's right. The first guy, Chuma Okiki. Last week, Okiki had a three-game stretch where he was averaging 14 points, 4.3 rebounds, 1.3 steals, and 1.7 threes while shooting 57%. All right. He's cooled off over his last two games, but Okiki is looking at ample opportunity moving forward, especially with the latest reports of Jonathan Isaac not being ready to begin live game action, which is just a punch to the gut for all of us stashing Jonathan Isaac in Mm. our IL spots. Uh, I was just asked, should I drop, should I drop Jonathan Isaac? I said, if he's clogging, if he's clogging your IL spot and you only have one and you have a few people that you are, that are on your bench, especially if you're losing, I don't mind cutting Isaac, even though it hurts because that guy is a triple one beast. Uh, but Chuma Okiki, uh, the Orlando magic invested, a mid first round pick on this young man last year. Okay. So they have a lot invested in him. So he hasn't played under 20 minutes, uh, all season, uh, since, since he started, since he started playing because they want to give Okiki a lot of run. So I would definitely look his way. Um, if you need solid steals along with low end, you know, you know, just, uh, you know, like points and rebounds. Uh, so definitely, definitely give him a look. And he is available in a lot of leagues. And with that news about um, 
Isaac, um, Isaac Okora, Jonathan yeah. Isaac. With that news yeah. falling, if you have uh, Franz Wagner, I mean, he's just been very, very solid in in the fantasy. He gets you block steals, and he's somebody that I cut earlier, maybe a yep. couple weeks ago, because they were upcoming, only having two games. I thought I could, I could sneak by with him uh, being there, free agent. I can scoop him back up, but he's on now, and I don't see him coming back my way. Uh, he's he he's the guy, and he's one of our. Uh, rookie darlings or yes. one from one Isaac to the next. That's right. Oh man. Yeah. I mean, like we have to talk about the bummer of Jonathan Isaac to Isaac Okoro, uh, who also was a rookie last year who started virtually every game for the Cavaliers last season as a rookie. So the Cavaliers have high hopes for this young man, uh, you know, and now, uh, you know, after missing seven games earlier in the season due to a hamstring injury, the second year forward has started the last eight games for Cleveland. All right. And during that span, Okoro is averaging 7.9 points, over five rebounds, two assists, 1.3 steals. All right. He doesn't dominate in any one category, but contributes in five while keeping mm. your turnovers low. All right. He's averaging about 32 minutes a game and definitely deserves an ad in 14 plus team leagues, especially if you need solid steals along with low end threes and rebounds. Yeah, and for me, I'm not huge on the Isaac Okoro bandwagon as far as fantasy is concerned. I do love his defensive potential, and he does yeah. have, uh, I think, in the future down the line, he has potential to be a top five steel guy. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he just still hasn't figured out offensively how to be efficient. He's a 35% uh, shooter right now, and last year he right. was under 40. Uh, he's just a guy that I'm more of a, a watch candidate. Um, and a guy that I think is a teammate of him that I would prefer to pick up, and this is a temporary hit, is uh, Chetty Osmond. This is a one-game sample size, and this was <laughs> the day before Thanksgiving. We'll see what he does tonight, but he had 23. Yeah. Um, he's hitting the three ball well. He had hit five of them. Uh, when he's on, he actually gets a high usage rate, uh, especially without uh, Sexton in there. They're, they're looking for an offensive punch, and uh, Chetty Osmond, he's been known to be kind of a – a, a streamer favorite um certain matchups he just goes ballistic as he did uh with boss and he had uh some back issues and he missed a couple of games but then he, he came back last night with 23 but he had 26 points two rebounds five assists six three-pointers made two steals against boston on november 15 and he's gonna get you steals um yeah. he doesn't look the part as far as a you know somebody that as a defensive type of player um but he's a, a tough turkish born kid that uh he gets it in. There's no, um, there's no lows as far as his confidence is concerned. When he gets it going, um, and as we've seen um, on the 24th, hitting five threes, he's gonna let it fly. So I, I'd, I'd prefer him over Okoro, but I definitely uh, like Okoro as far as a watch candidate in going into the future. Mm -hmm. And maybe if you have him on one of those futures uh, dynasty teams, um, you're yeah. not mad at him because they have invested in him. He's a top ten pick, right? And um, they're trying to. They're giving him the time in the shine. So, and he, it has you know winning characteristics. We saw that uh, for Auburn. So, you know, you know, shout shout him out. Um, shout out a, a guy that again we we told you to drop earlier in the year. This was like week two, and um, it was very it, he was going through a shooting slump, uh, much like Desmond Bain. Um, and when shooters are get it going again, you got to pick him up. He at four of the last five games, he's had at least four three pointers. This is Malik Beasley. He's point guard, shooting guard uh, eligible. He's found his niche off the bench. Uh, he's the guy that I watch as far as if there's any injuries at the top of that guard uh, lineup for the Wolves, he's going to give you twenty plus. So he's the guy that could probably benefit the most off of injuries. Um, he had 29 points, three rebounds, uh, five three-pointers made against uh, Miami just this Ooh. last week. He's had, you know, 14% uptick. Uh, and he's he's scoring the ball. Um, he's not shy to shoot it. He's going to give you threes. He's going to get you points. He's not going to get you much more than that. Uh, but if you're a categories person and, you you know, you're playing against Steph Curry, <laughs> you got to yeah. gotta match him somehow. And Malik Beasley right now, he's hot. He's somebody that you won't feel terrible about cutting to the about these shooters. You got to get them when they're hot. So Malik Beasley is a guy. Now Jeff Green sneakily is cooking for the Denver Nuggets, and he, of course he fits with a smart player like Jokic. But even Jokic didn't play last night. 
He had 24 points, four rebounds, three assists, three pointers, three three pointers made, two stocks. Uh, again, then this was heads up against Giannis in Milwaukee. Uh, just this last week, he's averaging 19 points, four rebounds, one assist, six basically 60 percent from the field, and 2.3 threes a game. Uh, he's only 10 percent rostered people. I this is mind boggling with this production and with his small forward power forward eligibility. So, Jeff Green uh, sneakily on the low. He's not getting picked up at all. He's not rostered ninety percent leagues, dude. He fills it up across the board, and right now he's scoring the ball so well. I mean, I would take a gamble, and he's playing thirty plus minutes a game the last four, so they are trusting him um, to to be part of that uh, Denver Nuggets offense. He's starting too, and like you said, yep. Jokic is out, and we don't know when Michael Porter Jr. is coming back. So Jeff Green is definitely. It definite looks like he's not. Work. He's going on a shelf for a long time, right. especially with the back, the lingering back. We you saw yep. him miss his entire rookie year, and you know we feel bad for a guy that you know got yeah. paid you know you know a hundred million. Uh, but yeah, um, from a guy that's that's hot to two two guys that have uh, safe floors, and you we like a safe floor candidate. That's our, like kind of our new category. Right. So I'm going to let uh, Jacob take the lead on our next guy for the Atlanta Hawks. Yeah, man, Kevin Horder. All right. He has started the last seven games and he is averaging 28 minutes per game in those seven games. He's as safe as they come when it comes to threes and field goal percentage, along with low end rebounds and assists. He doesn't provide much defensive stats, but if you need a safe boost in threes, field goal percentage, rebounds and assists, Porter is definitely your guy. So give him a look for that safe floor like James was talking about. And at the beginning of the season, it was very, like, pathetic at the, his performance. He was, like, shooting under 20% from the field. Uh, I think Yeah, with, but now he's getting that opportunity with uh, yeah, Hunter. DeAndre Hunter with yep. the injury. Sometimes that builds confidence. We Sorry. saw that in the playoffs. It was There was no – um, Cam Reddish and the minutes were there when he I guess when he has confidence and he's getting minutes uh, he play, he plays much better in this you know Maryland alum some of that I root for it he's just a well-rounded uh, basketball player from one well-rounded white guy to a next uh, Pat Connington <laughs> of of the Bucks uh, a guy that uh, Jacob had as a, a three-point streamer in the last this last week uh, he's 40 percent rostered and he had five percent uptick tick in the last week week he's averaging 15 points five rebounds on 62.5 percent shooting so he does a little bit of what Grayson Allen does but shoots at a higher percentage at this point and he can give you a steal 0.8 blocks this last week uh, he's had double digits in nine straight games hit 20 points four rebounds four three-pointers made uh at Denver just last evening so Pat Connington Kevin Herter, our safe floor guys. We already mentioned Precious with his rebounds. Mm -hmm. uh, but we got a couple people that we want to watch. People that have had uh, lottery picks. Two people that have uh, have high glowing remarks about themselves. And one is Marvin Bagley. And I'm going to mm -hmm. start with him. He's power forward center eligible. As you know, Luke Walton just got fired. And they started sprinkling him in the rotation. But yesterday he got 35 minutes, I believe. Yes, the game went yeah. into triple overtime. Uh, but he was seven of eight from the field. He had 13 points, seven rebounds, four assists against the Lakers. Um, and in the last two games, which is a small sample size, but it is your most recent. And he's a former number two overall pick, which means he has a very high ceiling and high potential. And who knows? He could get moved maybe to Detroit and really blow up. Yeah. Uh, at five percent, 15 percent roster. Take a gamble. Our gamble last week was Rudy Gay. It didn't work out. Uh, he wasn't the guy. But then I'm sure you you moved on and you used another pick. But. You know, he will produce in points and rebounds. He's not great at everything else, but he does do those two things. Yeah, I mean, he was the second overall pick, and the Kings really want to showcase him. So definitely add him and just see if he gets moved. And if he doesn't, maybe he continues to get 20 to 30 minutes. I like that ad. Or that watch, you know, like just watch him. Uh, but this next guy here, it's PJ Washington. All right. After being sidelined for 10 games, PJ returned this week and played 24 minutes off the bench. All right. Last Friday, he scored 17 points along with six boards and five threes. All right. When PJ is healthy, he has proven to be a steady triple one contributor. All right. That's a three, a steal and a block. So I'm definitely watching and making the ad. If he has another good outing, you know, I give yes. the guys at least two games like, okay, he's heating up, you know, you know, like it, the NBA jam rules. And if he has three good games, then he is on fire. But with PJ Washington, he has already proved it. So if he has a 
second good game in a row, I'm making the ad immediately. And um, he's benefited because Plumlee is out, uh, right. but they started him at center. He had originally yep. lost his starting position to Miles Bridges at power forward. But if you can find a way to have them play together and him just play, you know, small five guy, which is, I mean, he's so skilled that why not? And he, and he produces on defense. So um, we'll see what the Hornets do with this new look, but maybe that's a, a spot in a home for him going forward. Yes. Another guy that's been on the watch list, he had 20 points yesterday, Kobe White. Is, he's a flame flow again shooters shoot when they get hot <laughs> so i would say definitely don't click the ad yet he's, he's only 15 percent roster but you it, there's a chance that he could start um blowing up soon especially with all the injuries in that right. uh chicago on that chicago team speaking of injuries uh we spoke about john morant uh left knee sprain we're sending our prayers to his right. way uh pj dozier another denver nugget out mm -hmm. torn acl um Shout out to Austin Rivers. He might get some run here. He might. Uh, Bones, we've talked about in the past. Yep, really, where we've talked about uh, Jeff Green now playing heavy minutes in that rotation. Yeah. Um, Josh Richardson is out. Uh, DeAndre Hunter, again, that wrist. OG Ananobi, hip out a while. Rashawn Holmes mm. uh, now has an eye injury. And Harrison Barnes as well. So that Marvin Bagley pick. Is looking uh is looking very tempting. It is, uh, especially at the beginning of the week. I don't know how your league works, but if you got three pickups, and I might spend one on him or PJ Washington, and then if you got a close ties, then you just have to to do that. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so uh, we try to quicken things up a little bit. Uh, we love the comments from last week. We did notice that. 80% of our viewership comes from people that are non-subscribed. So we really would appreciate if you yes. uh, would subscribe going forward. We're bringing the heat every week. Um, we're replying back via Twitter or here on the YouTube. Um, we're loving what we're doing. We're trying to get better each and every week. And we love your opinions on the side. Uh, test us out with some trade talk. There's been some really good conversation as far as that's concerned for not only to myself, but to Jacob as well. We're always here to reply back <laughs> within 24 hours. Jacob, any um, any wise words as we kind of head out here? Man, just want to say whether you are about to be 6-0, and 0 and 6 set your lineup and do your best. It's a long season, guys. It's a grind. So let's make that comeback or let's keep being on top, all right? And that starts with watching this video. If you have to watch it again, let's watch it again because we work hard on this. James works super hard on this, and we just want to win you your league. You know, we want to help you win. So, man, let's – uh. Yeah, we're Let's unselfish over here. I'm not, I'm not hiding the secrets, you know. Even the guy, even the guys that are in my league, they're watching me and they're they're picking up, the, you know, Jared Vanderbilt. Except I got him this week. That's so, right. So, <laughs> shout out to the whole Triple Play Fantasy team that keeps this engine running. Again, we we drop this every week. There's a, a football pod, there's a baseball pod, as well as so much content on the YouTube channel. So please like, subscribe our videos. Continue to love a game of basketball like we do, and. um Let's all try to be like Steph Curry. <laughs> what a great human being. <laughs> That's right.